For more than six months, mercenaries from Wagner's group and the Russian army have been trying to take Bakhmut in eastern Ukraine, a city of limited strategic importance, but which has acquired great symbolic significance due to the long duration of the fighting. Russian troops have been trying to lay siege to the city for the last few weeks. They have succeeded in cutting off several vital supply routes for the Ukrainian troops. Wagner's group announced on January 11 that they had captured Solodor, a larger town not far from Krasnohora. But it took the Russian Defense Ministry two days to announce Solodor's arrest, showing the extent of the dispute between Wagner and the regular Russian army. Meanwhile, the Russian military again dropped 16 missiles in the early hours of February 16 on critical Ukrainian infrastructure. The Russian Air Force reports that a total of 32 missiles have been launched against Ukraine. These included eight caliber cruise missiles from frigates in the Black Sea, 12 X-101 slash X-555 cruise missiles launched from two 295 strategic bombers from the Caspian Sea, 12 X-22 cruise missiles launched from six 222 bombers, long range from the Russian border Kursk Oblast, and two X-59 guided missiles from two Su-35 tactical aircraft from the Russian-occupied Melitopol area in the Zaporizhia Oblast. A number of X-22 rockets hit critical infrastructure objects in a number of areas. Russian troops attacked critical infrastructure in Lviv Oblast in the early hours of February 16 according to regional governor Maxim Kozitsky, while in Dnipropetrovsk Oblast, a woman was killed and two other civilians were injured in Pavlorad. A few days ago, a video circulating of Russian occupiers fleeing, realizing that artillery would now work on them, appeared on the internet. The two invader trucks were driving so fast that soldiers fell from them. No one stopped and took it. It cannot be ruled out that the losers went unnoticed. The invaders also dropped a cannon that was being towed. Subsequently, the artillery of the 113th Ground Defense Brigade and units of the armed forces of Ukraine worked against the enemy. On the other hand, Wagner boss Yevgeny Prigozhin said his mercenary group is facing difficulties in Ukraine and will soon reduce in size. The number of Wagner units will decrease, and we will also not be able to carry out the scope of work that we want, said Prigozhin, amid mounting evidence that his political influence in the Kremlin is dwindling. Prigozhin's comments followed the recent announcement that the mercenary group would no longer recruit prisoners to fight ending a month-long campaign in which Wagner registered some 40,000 convicts from Russian prisons. The employer offered no explanation for declaring an end to recruitment, but observers said the move was part of the growing backlash against him from Russia's security services. Wagner groups fighting the Ukrainians in Bakhmut first started shelling the town in May 2022, and fighting intensified in August. But instead of a quick victory, the battle devolved into a brutal stalemate. The two claimed to regularly kill over a hundred enemy fighters daily in the city. Russia said on Wednesday it had penetrated two Ukrainian fortified lines in the east and Kyiv spoke of relentless Russian attacks, making it difficult for us, as Western allies announced more military aid to Kyiv, including artillery rounds. Backed by tens of thousands of reservists recruited in December after months of humiliating battlefield turnarounds, Russia has intensified offensives across southern and eastern Ukraine in recent weeks, and a major new offensive is widely anticipated as the first anniversary of its invasion draws near. Russia has called the invasion a special military operation against security threats saying NATO is showing hostility towards Russia every day and is getting more and more involved in the conflict. Kyiv and its allies have branded Russia's actions an unreasonable land grab. Russia controls southern Ukraine in Kherson and Zaporizhia, including its nuclear plants, almost all of Luhansk, and more than half of Donetsk. Last year, Russia said it had annexed four territories in a move condemned by most UN members as illegal.
Late Tuesday, Ukraine's President, Volodymyr Zelensky, described the situation on the front as very difficult, especially in Donetsk and Luhansk. This is literally a battle for every meter of Ukrainian soil, Zelensky said in his evening address to the nation. Russia's victory in Bakhmut would give the Kremlin a boost after months of decline and would be a springboard for fighting for the next two major Ukrainian-held cities. Russian forces now occupy areas to the north and south of Bakhmut and have attempted to defeat the Ukrainian forces by continuously throwing infantry onto the Ukrainian front lines. A few weeks ago, in a conflict dominated by artillery, the Ukrainian army, which was fighting for control of the eastern town of Marenka, was very close to Russian troops. Russia has prioritized capturing the Donetsk industrial area where Marenka is located, and its nearly year-long Russian invasion has been a war of attrition between long-range weapons. But amid the dilapidated buildings of Marenka, which had a pre-war population of about 10,000, and is now cut down in the middle by the front lines, the Ukrainian army suddenly comes face to face with the enemy. They can emerge from behind a wall 10 to 20 meters, 33 to 66 feet, from you, all of a sudden, climbing through the rubble," said one member of Ukraine's 79th Brigade, who declined to give his name. The soldiers who fended off the Russian troops on Marenka told AFP that, with no buildings left to shelter from, they were fighting from the basements, crouching behind remaining chunks of wall and rubble. The bad news comes just after the head of NATO, Jens Stoltenberg, announced that Russia has begun a new offensive in the east in a bid to seize more territory before new Western equipment arrives in spring. Stoltenberg described the situation as a race against logistics. The Russian army has been replenished with reserves and is now attacking Ukrainian positions with increased intensity. A powerful new offensive is believed to be on its way although some experts say it has most likely already started. Ukraine's Deputy Defense Minister Hanna Malyar wrote on Telegram that shootings were happening 24 hours a day in eastern Ukraine, and the situation was serious. The Russian Ministry of Defense has reported that Ukrainian troops have withdrawn in Luhansk, but has provided no information on the exact location. <laughs>